Hi everybody, this is the Atelier Sarah Jane podcast. I was sitting here knitting and casting on a new project in sort of mohair yarn with mohair and kid silk and it is the My Braided Fest by Siv, knit by Siv, Siv Kristen Olsen. And um, I have been having cast on nighties. <laughs> Uh, this week and I was sitting here and I was thinking hey uh, I've made this little nook in my house upstairs where I have my computer a big screen I have my computer I have my knit stuff and I've just actually um, started making a little um, um, cupboard to put up some woolies have some woolies clothes Mostly, I, I carry my woolies around in these um, baskets. I'll just show you because I have two here. And there are baskets like this, and I can hang them up in the kitchen or anywhere or shove them next to our couch or something. But I have them near, and I just sort of carry around my projects. Um, but I was sitting here, and I was thinking... Sorry. <laughs> I was sitting here, and I was thinking... I haven't even uploaded the last pod my last podcast. Why did I stop? Well, I stopped not because I don't want to make a podcast. I stopped because life has just been so hectic. Um and it's been I've it's been sort of uh difficult to know what 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 to feel about it. Uh what what's happening really even, you know? And I'm just going to continue knitting a little bit. Um, it's just been really weird, a weird time I have, and and things are going to be, continue being a little bit weird. Is this a good pose for me? Because I feel like I'm really dark. Yes, this is better. Um, it's going to continue being a bit weird for a while. Uh, things are going to change for me. And I'll just have to see how I go and how I get used to things. So I'll start my podcast properly. This is the Atelier Sarah Jane podcast. My name is Sarah Jane. I live in a little village in the forest in Holland. Um, and I have three children. And I have a web shop with naturally dyed Dutch wool. I did start to dye some other wool. I did some Wensleydale and some uh, BFL Gotland. Uh, but I think I'll return to my, I think I'll keep it with the uh, tesselar. It's a mix of Dutch wools which are bred from sheep which are bred near my home. And it is a really beautiful uh, yarn type and I'm really enthusiastic about it. I love wearing it and I just want to put it into the world. Um, I'll just quickly show you a couple of skeins which are behind my computer here which I was photographing yesterday. If you look on Instagram you'll see a photo with these lovelies. Um, two colours. This is like, um, this is a real ooh, ochre, real real ochre colour. And this is more of a um, ochre reddish, with an ochre with a little red in it. Oh god, yeah, sorry, sorry. You can see the yarn is quite rustic but it's really beautiful and if you knit something with this it will last you a lifetime and um, yeah so that's what I do sort of that's what I do um, but things are going to change for me which I'll explain and I'll sort of have to yeah think about how I'll do the podcast but I do want to continue it and actually I want to be a little bit better with it or more regular so that I build up like a story and that you that I can show you more of what I'm doing because I've done so much these last months and um, yeah one thing I've done uh, on the Wednesday mornings I have taught um, four lovely ladies how to knit and um, I really wanted to try uh, giving a knitting class um, and seeing how that works, how they, how, how they, um, if they understand the way I 
teach and I made little films, little movies, which I'll insert one um, here. So I learnt, I taught them cast on, the long tail cast on and the cable cast on. I taught them how to knit, I taught them how to purl, I taught them how to cast off, I taught, taught them how to make one, so increases and then make one left, left, make one right, that's opposite view. And I taught them um, how to cast off. And then I did a, the last, um, the last episode, not episode, the last lesson, I taught them special techniques. So I taught them cables and a little bit of fair isle. And just an introduction and uh, to both, just to sort of tickle them. And they have just gone wild. They're complete knitters now. Uh, they've made, they've made cowls and one is, uh, currently making a mohair sweater, top down, raglan, everything. And so the little films that I make really help because they don't have to call me or someone. They just can have a little look and they know, oh yeah, this is how she explained it. This is how I, just to remind them. And so that has been really fun. Um, we did it on a Wednesday morning whilst the kids were at school. And yeah. It was just so much fun and I really, really enjoyed it. So I would love to do more. They would love to do a sock knitting um, course to knit socks. And they would love to do um, more fair isle. So I might... Um, so sock knitting, because they can now do tube. I, oh yeah, and, and I taught them knitting in the round and knitting on um, straight needles. So so what I did actually was the first thing that they knit, they, that was a, it was a cowl. And the cowl was just um, like the side, they cast on stitches and they knit a cowl. And with all the sort of different stitches they I taught them. And then they attached it uh, together and then you had a cowl. And I bought them... I made them a little project bag and I bought them uh, the bulky lopi from, uh, if you, I don't know if you know the Icelandic yarn, but it's the bulky lopi and it's really luscious and thick and they had 10 millimeter needles so they could sort of, yeah, really, it it's, has a really good stitch def definition so you can really see very well what you're doing and that really helped them and they loved it. Um, and then I taught them, we did the... Um, World's Simplest Mitten by Tin Can Knits Together, which is a mitten uh, where you knit two identical mittens. So you knit the thumb to the side uh, and not to the front. And uh, in this day, they learnt the cast on in the round, the rib stitch, so and then the, the increases and then the dividing of the little thumb. So you put the needle, you put the stitches on a, on a separate needle and then, yeah, and then decreases on top. So actually that is everything you need to ever knit a sweater or a bigger garment. So, and it's fun and small and they knit, most of them knit it in um, let lopi. No, uh, yeah, let lopi, yeah, the lopi yarn. So that was really good and it was really fun. And they've, um, I was interrupted because my eldest came back I remember, I think, that I zoomed past what I was knitting, but I've, I'm actually just cast on the border stitches. So I'm knitting a rib and I'm using two threads. So I'm using the... I'm using the Kid Silk Mohair by Drops and I'm using the Peloso Merino Extra Fine with Kid Silk Mohair by... Um, Lana Grossa. Um, so these two colours together and they make the rib. So the pattern calls for, <clears throat> the pattern actually asked me to cast on in the round but I wanted to make a split rib because I really like a little split hem on the side. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm knitting the two front and back piece of the border separately and then I'll connect them and continue in the round. So yeah, really lovely project 
and I'm really happy with it. Um, so I forgot what I was talking about. So I'll just continue with the rest. So I wanted to show you some of the things that I um, finished. And one that I'm really, really happy about and that I've worn lots is this. It is the Clotilde cardigan. Oh, look at that. That's really beautiful. You can see the pattern in the sunlight. Um, I knitted in Let Lopi, rust colour, and I, and I held the Lopi double. And then I have made two buttons on the front. I'll just close the buttons. Oh, there, so I can hold it up. And it's got this beautiful balloon um, sleeves. Um, it's lovely. I'm really happy with it. It was um, we knitted on nine millimeter needles, so it does go quite fast. But because of the patterning, um, you do want to get it right. So it was a, uh, a cardigan where I had to sort of concentrate every row, but I loved it. So it's the Clotilde cardigan by I will put it below by who it was. But if you if you um, Put in the hashtag Clotilde cardigan on Instagram, you'll find it. And then, which I actually wanted to finish whilst sitting here, so I might start doing that. I knit uh, a vest, a cardigan to in uh, holding three colours of mohair together. And when I started this cardigan. The pattern, I think it's cardigan number four by, is it my happiness, oh gosh, sorry, I also knit it, put it below. And it was in the um, fisherman's rib. And I was so enjoying the fisherman's rib until with all holding all the threads together, I started making mistakes. And I had all these little loops and I was really unhappy about it. And I, I just thought, okay, um, any knitter knows that knitting back or frogging mohair is not a lot of fun. So, I don't know. I don't know. Anybody knows that knitting uh, or frogging um, mohair is not a lot of fun. So, what I did, I did frog it and it took me a whole morning. But then I started the cardigan again and I knit um, I knitted in garter stitch and um, and you knit the border at the same time which is really lovely and the border edge is really beautiful as well um, and I was really happy I did that but then I got to the sleeves and obviously when you knit in the round you'd have to do the sleeves knit one round purl the other and I didn't want to do that so I just knit back and forth um, and now all I have to do is actually sew the sleeves together also balloon sleeves really lovely and it's just a really lovely light super cardigan I used three colors I know and it has a sort of mauvey gray purple look um, I'm seeing, gonna see if I can if I hold it to the uh, can you see the yeah you can see the light grey or it's sort of a natural colour grey and then there's a purplish sort of colour there too. So that was really really cool and I want still want to do a cardigan and fisherman's rib but I think that I should do um I actually found a pattern in Rowan um by pattern by Rowan because I have been watching the sit and knit for a bit with Arna and Carlos. If you don't know them, go check them out because it is really fun. And they are making Norwegian folk costumes and they're explaining everything they do um, in the whole process. And it's just really interesting. Even uh, one of them, 
I think it was Carlos, explained how to iron linen. And I just, I was inspired. I thought, yes, very interesting. So if you don't know them, go and check them out. Um, but um, yes, they are designers for Rowan. They make collections. They design collections for Rowan. So I had, went to have a look on the Rowan website and I was looking at all of the patterns. And then I actually found a free pattern for a sweater done in fisherman's rib and I thought <clears throat> because it's just it's not in the round it's just I thought maybe I'll try that but I'll try that with a singular yarn I'm not going to hold yarns double for fisherman's rib before I know the stitch very well so this is what I've finished um I am knitting on some things for a friend of mine who has a cardigan in production but I can't show you that because um, I'm writing down the pattern for her uh, so she can she might be able to get it produced somewhere. But yeah, really interesting and lovely. Then another thing that I've wanted to cast on, and also I showed this on Instagram, is my um, Textures Unite shawl. It's a pattern by Stephen West, West Knits. And this part is the first part, it's the brioche. And I am knitting this in a skein of Corydale sock, uh, which I, when I, when I was on the look for an Eng English yarns, I got in some yarns from a wholesaler, and one of them was Corydale sock, and I did dye them. I dyed this with indigo. It was a rest, a bath of indigo. I used up everything, and I just left it in overnight. I think really long and. Um, it's really, really beautiful, and it, it, yeah, I'm absolutely adoring the pattern. You can see that there's sort of, it's variegated, it's not a solid colour, the, the indigo, and I'm knitting it together with a tweedy sock yarn that I was still in my stash. So, this is the first of five sections, no, six sections of the vertices. Oh no, it's not the vertices. You also have the vertices unite, which is a, is just in stock in it, I think, or in Gata. And this is the textures unite. So you have you knit cables, brioche, Gata, slip stitches, all the things, and I'm really enjoying it. So then, and I'm going to round off with that. Um, I have some yarns in my stash that I wanted to show you, um, which I'm going to use. First thing, I went to the a, a yarn festival in Holland in Zwolle. It's called the Breidagen, the Knitting Days, and there I bought a little mini set by Sino, Sionach Yarns. She's an I met her at um, no, I didn't meet her actually. I saw her at Woolen in Dublin the year before, and I thought there was just such a cute little sock set. It's got a green color and a and a pink, green, natural, and then a uh, sort of bright yellowish. So I want to make, I want to put them, uh, use these in my Textures Unite. So that's one. Then I did a swap with Bone and Birch. Bone and Birch Needleworks is her name. And we did a, um, yarn swap so I sent her some Dutch naturally dyed Dutch yarn and she sent me some naturally dyed um, of her yarn and it's a collection of yarns it is non superwash fingering weight wool merino and Romney blend um, and yeah so a mini skein in a sort of yellowish color and then a really beautiful red dark red color and then a sort of, which I love these sort of, yeah, fady, pink, beige sort of colours. And so I'm really happy with these two. And I think as a colour bond, they go really well. How do I show this better? Yeah, with these. So these will also go in my shawl. And then I did another yarn yarn swap with cabin boy knits 
and I sent him two skeins of my naturally dyed and he sent me two skeins of his naturally dyed and it's so much fun because um, there's so much love in these swaps because it's it's enthusiasm for another dyer doing their work it's enthusiasm for the wool business it's enthusiasm for the maker and the craft and he sent me these two beautiful skeins of this is 8% EFL Blue Face Leicester and 20% Silk and this is Shetland Wool UK and it's also a lovely green colour and that actually goes really well with, with the colours from CMAF yarns so I'm really happy with that um, I'm going to put these colours in and then I had another was it this one? No, it wasn't that one. I don't know if I if I brought it up. No, I don't think I did. Oh yes, I did. Yeah. Um, this one is Natural Sock by um, Woolly Mammoth, the Woolly Mammoth Yarn Company. So it's got little specks of purple, and um, it's sort of that mauvey pink as well. So all together, that is going in my, um, not Vertices Unite. Uh, so the last thing I wanted to show you, and that was something really unexpected for me actually. On Instagram, I was contacted by uh, the woman or the family behind Cool Magazine. Um, it's this magazine. And um, it is beautiful. She asked me if I wanted to send some yarn so she could put me in the magazine, and she did. And oh my goodness, I have a little, I am a Dutch treat. So she writes Dutch treat, naturally dyed yarns from the lands below sea level, brought to you by Sarah Jane. Fast becoming our fake go to yarns for all of our knit pieces in gorgeous earth tones colour combinations, just the way we like it. And she's put my shop um, address. She did, she did a beautiful picture of the skeins I sent her. And it's just such an honour because the magazine is absolutely gorgeous. I don't know if you know it, but the paper is beautiful and the layout is beautiful and it's just, it's got great patterns. I love this little sock pattern in here with cables and it's just amazing and I'm I'm just so I was so chuffed to be in there and to be included and so it's a if you don't know it go and get the magazine um you can get it via her website cool magazine or you can find her on Instagram and um yeah I love it I think it's amazing and she there's a there's a combination of knitting crochet um braiding craft uh punch needlework it's just lots and lots and lots and it's so beautiful and it's really well written so i'm really happy i haven't read all of it but i'm com i'm going to read this from cover to cover and she sent me this one um, because i was in it and yeah I, I think it's beautiful i think the cover is beautiful as well the colors are gorgeous and um, yeah, so I'm really, really happy about that. I'm a Dutch treat, <laughs> which is so, just, yeah, really cool. Um, next week, I'm going to record another podcast and I'll tell you about all the things that are going to change for me. Um, I do, uh, yeah, I think I'll leave it till then because then I know uh, everything will be more clear and um, uh, yeah, but there's just, I'm going to have a little change of job work and um, I'll tell you about that next week so I hope you enjoyed this little episode I know the light keeps changing but that's autumn isn't it it's light and dark and light and dark and it's all the things <laughs> so I really really hope to see you soon and um, I will yeah see you then bye bye